chapter 7. By the late 1980s, 1988, 1989, Northern California was being compared to a war zone under siege. The next generation of Familianos was making their move. North against South confrontations, street terrorism, and gang violence were all on the rise. Most Northern California cities were experiencing a tremendous amount of gangland violence. Gang robbery, bloodshed, drive-by shootings, and murder amongst the youth were at an all-time high. Evidence of its intensity was astounding. A landmark event in Salinas served to solidify Norteño Sureño hatred. The infamous incident took place on or about March 2nd, 1988. Matthew Mateo Rocha, a future NF member from a notorious Norteño street gang called Salinas East Marqueta SEM, went to an exclusive party in a Salinas warehouse held by and for Norteños. Gordo, a member of a nearby Sureño street gang called Madera Barrio Locos, MBL, also attended it. Gordo was a seasoned Sureño, veterano, and a Sureño leader. Originally from down south, he had lived in Salinas for years. He was well known, respected, and had a lot of influence with other Sureños. The Norteños in and around Salinas knew exactly who he was and what he was about and they held him responsible for a lot of the North against South chaos occurring in Salinas. The local Norteños considered Gordo a primary target. He was number one on their hit list. A good number of them couldn't wait to get their hands on him. To say the least, an experienced Sureño like Gordo should have known he was out of bounds in attempting to attend a Norteño-dominated party. At the party, it was alleged that Rocha and a few other Norteños were quick to notice that Gordo was extremely intoxicated and alone in the enemy territory. As the party progressed into the late evening hours, Rocha and two other Norteños, Joaquin from East Las Casitas and Negro from Gilroy, made plans to ambush him. The three decided to establish a false friendship with their target. Their plan was to get Gordo relaxed and trick him into going to another non-existent party on the other side of town. They duped him in a Joaquin's car and took him for a one-way ride. After all four of the party animals got into Joaquin's car, Joaquin drove straight to Rocha's trailer. Rocha got out of the car, went into his trailer, and returned a short while later with a couple of kitchen knives. By this time, Gordo had fallen asleep, unaware of the danger he was in. Everyone in the car except Gordo knew what was going to happen next. On Rocha's instructions, Joaquin drove to a deserted part of Old Stage Road in the Salinas foothills. After pulling over, Joaquin got out of the car to act as a lookout. Rocha and Negro then stabbed Gordo in the face and upper body. The unsuspecting and drunken Gordo didn't even know what had hit him. Fatally wounded, he died. When they realized that Gordo was dead, the three dragged his corpse into a nearby field. There was a brief celebration and they mutually agreed that they wanted everyone to know that Nortanios were responsible for Gordo's murder. In one last show of disrespect, it was said that Rocha ripped open Gordo's shirt and used his knife to carve 14 into his chest. The three killers got back into Joaquin's car and attempted to flee the scene of the crime. As they drove away, Joaquin noticed that the inside of his car was covered with Gordo's blood. It was everywhere, on the seats, the floorboards, and the windows. Joaquin panicked and drove off the side of the road and into a field where the car got stuck in the freshly plowed dirt. The three Northern California homeboys got out of the car and decided to walk. They didn't have any other choice, and Rocha didn't hesitate to let his two partners in crime know that he was pissed off at Joaquin. Rocha didn't appreciate having to walk, and he sure didn't want to get caught or be seen in the area. He had been around and knew it wasn't a good idea to leave a blood-soaked car and fingerprints behind as evidence. He knew they needed to get the car out of the field. While walking back to town, they spotted a stop sign, which they pulled out of the ground and carried back to the car to use for leverage to get the car out of the dirt. It didn't work. All three who were worried about getting caught didn't take long to abandon their impossible mission. They resumed walking and Rocha let Joaquin and Negro know that Gordo's brutal murder would send the message to all Sureños that they weren't welcome in Salinas. Rocha, proud of what he had done, 
told his two crime partners that he also wanted all of the Nortenio homeboys to know that they were the ones who killed Gordo. But since none of the killers wanted to be arrested, they made a pact to spread the word but to deny any involvement should they be questioned or arrested by the police. All three agreed and Rocha actually started bragging about the way he had lured Gordo to his death. The car and mutilated body were discovered the next day. The murder received a lot of attention in the local newspapers, but no arrests followed. The three murderers were completely free for the time being. However, just as Nortanios wouldn't hesitate to kill an enemy, Nortanios wouldn't hesitate to kill one of their own to conceal a murderer's identity from the police. Not long after Gordon was murdered, one of the homeboys known on the streets as Jose Joe Winuelos, an NR member from Barrio Greenfield Norte, BGN, in Norteño Street Gang, Greenfield, was paroled from prison and began hanging around with Rocha. Rocha and Buenuelos were considered NF associates and assigned to function in the same street regiment. The two pulled a string of robberies together, including a few of the local drug connections. They started selling the drugs they had stolen. They made a good team and gradually became good friends. Rocha trusted Buenuelos. Not only did he tell Buñuelos about the crimes he had committed, but he also confided to him the details of Gordo's murder. As time went by, Buñuelos started using drugs. Rocha found out about it and wondered why Buñuelos parole officer didn't revoke his parole. At the same time, Buñuelos stopped coming around because he didn't want anyone to notice his drug use. Rocha, out of suspicion, began to question Buñuelos and his loyalty. Rocha decided that Buñuelos could be an informant because he had not seen him for a couple of days. By this time, Gordo's murder had gained notoriety. Rocha on the edge, worried about being arrested and expecting Sureño retaliation, didn't know whom to trust, and paranoia began to get the better of him. Rocha, on full alert, was ready for anything and he began to carry a gun. A few days later, out of panic, Rocha confronted Buñuelos. He and Raymond Beasley, the Nortenio boyfriend of Rocha's mother, Maria, drove around in Beasley's car looking for Buñuelos. They eventually found him in an alleyway leading to his girlfriend's house on Soledad Street in Salinas. Rocha got out of the car and called to Buñuelos, who was talking with his girlfriend. With no clue that he was in danger, he casually walked up to Rocha, who immediately pulled out a gun and shot Buñuelos four to five times in the chest and upper body. And Wellos fell to the ground and died. Rocha calmly walked back to Beasley's car and in a matter of seconds, Beasley drove off as if nothing had happened. No arrests were immediately made.